As we turn our eyes to the Eagles week 10 matchup showdown and a rematch with the Kansas City Chiefs, the reigning world champions. Man, this one might have an unexpected outcome or one that maybe people are not leaning towards. What's up, it's your boy Central I'm coming at you with another announcement and I kid you not, that's my real name. And yeah, we're looking at the AFC West. Our opponent in week 10 will be the Kansas City Chiefs who beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl. I think it was, what, was that Super Bowl 57 um, that we just played in. But, you know, um, I, I, I really would love for this to be a rematch, a redo. And I think we come out on top. But anyways, let's get down to their roster to evaluate them properly. All right, the Kansas City Chiefs. I just like saying that. Just so be bothered, if you will. Um, the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, have a you know a pretty good roster, man. Um, we will cover each of their players as we always do, and then go back through comparing them to their matchups, um, whether that be one set of guys or another set of guys or a mix of both. Um, and let's start with All World Patrick Mahomes. Um, next, all right, not just playing, but I mean the the dude is pretty unassailable as far as like uh, I'm not saying he's perfect or impeccable, but um, you got to put, put together a pretty good game plan. I believe that we can, and definitely we're going to get up for this week, you know, Sean and Sidewell. Not that we need any motivation to do so, but it's a shot at, you know, the team that uh, that beat us, and, you know, that wears a ring that we, sh you know, should have been wearing if we would have won the game. But, um, you know, this, this bears no, this has no bearing on, on um, a potential future matchup. So, you know, the rematch uh, ideation is, is more of, you know, like a media-driven thing. Don't, I don't really care um, as far as like uh, bragging rights for it because if we win it, cool. It's a it's a measuring stick. That's all it is. Um, other than that, I don't really care. Um, other than us getting the dub, that's that's all I'm concerned with. I'm not you know concerned about getting out of here and and saying that hey man, we history says we beat you guys. It could you know you could predicate things off of you know how this game goes if we were to re, uh, play them again, which would only be in the Super Bowl. That being said. Um, things, you know, could shift from here. It could be, you know, a, a great injury suffered or um, just, you know, team identity solidified on either side. And, um, you know, just something you found that, you know, that sticks and you just run with it. I mean, you just want to, you know, you're not going to show, um, and, and it's not going to be the end all be all because teams evolve, especially in the playoffs, you know, where, you know, rapidly evolving environment um, or environment that, that uh, is a, catalyst for that so it could mean everything could mean nothing or could mean something in between but anyways um yeah the guy is, is pretty damn sharp but if we were able to put a, a modicum of pressure pressure on him even just one drive that might have changed the outcome of the game and i would say it's highly probable anyways um i have isaac pacheco, yeah isaac pacheco here he's a solid running back but how's he going to do in year two um how's he going to adjust i want to see him you know back it up but he's a highly talented guy man um runs a four three so it gives us uh, a, a good uh, lesson in exercising control, discipline. And um, he also has some, some pass catching chops. So I like the, the matchup, um, the competition, at least, that it brings out, um, that he brings. All right, the receivers here, they, you know, they, um, they lost um, Boo Boo Smith-Schuster and um, <laughs> Juju Smith-Schuster. That's what I call him. Um, and they're replacing him with Darius Tony and Marcus Val Valdez Scantling was there last year. Uh, consistent hand. He can he, he has some burners. He's a four four guy. Uh, Rasheed Rice is a new guy. I don't know how, how much he fits into the picture, but also they have um, Sky Moore. He's I, you know he's going to be better than Rasheed as of right now. Uh, has more seasoning, but I don't know you know can, are they going to be consistent? They have the ever consistent and the ever present threat of Travis Kelsey, um, the brother of Jason Kelsey, uber athletic. You know, just he's the number one um, receiver uh, for lack of intensive purposes. And I, I really like what he brings to the table, man. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see, like, how we play them because they're going to, you know, give us fits, you know, formations and, like, things that you did similar in the Super Bowl, um, being able to be amorphous and, and, and take any shape, uh, make you defend every blade of grass, similar to our offense in, in, in that uh, approach. But, um yeah, man, it's it's so multifaceted, and they can do so many things. Andy Reid is a genius head coach in the way he attacks defenses. So, um, it, you can never. I mean, yeah, just for that reason, the the court. I mean, the the coordinator slash head coach 
the quarterback, and then like the you know him being able to make use of the weapons, even if he, they were bereft of some of the, this talent they have there, because they have you know they could spread you out five wide with a receiver. Um, and I'm not even mis- mentioning Justin, um, forget his name, uh, who might show something this year. So they have a bevy of guys, and you know um, it'll be interesting to see how they gel and, and see if who makes it through the season healthy and, and whatnot. But up to this point, um, it, it'll just present an interesting challenge. It's going to challenge our actually our fourth and maybe even fifth uh, dime package um, defender. So, I mean, it, it, I can't say heads or tails, but I, I like us against, you know, their top receivers. I'm sh- still not sure whether we use uh, James Bradbury against Travis Kelsey. Now, I don't know if we put him on him 100% or just have him come in in spots. But, yeah, man, the matchup is going to be like, – it gets you excited. That's what you, you – you live for these ga- these type of games. The old line is, is, is tops in the league. I would say – I mean, yeah, easily top five. Maybe number two or number three, um, Donovan Smith, the guy coming um, coming over. I forget where he, you know where he's coming over from. I think, I think no, no, he's coming from from the Bucks. You know, solid guy. Um, at left tackle, I don't know can he handle it. We'll see. Um, Joe Thune, you know, very good guy. Creed Humphrey, one of the best in the league. Trey Smith, um, very solid. And Jawan Taylor, um, a good right tackle. So I mean, they got a solid line, man. It's gonna be tough sledding. But it's gonna be a, it's gonna be one of those dog fights. You can't call this one either. I think they're gonna win some battles. We're gonna lose. We're gonna lo- um, win some. Also lose some if we they win some. Duh. But man, it's gonna be a back and forth type of thing. And I, I like their 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 uh, weapons on the defensive line. I mean, they reloaded George Karolaftis. Karolaftis is in his second year, so we'll see if he can get it heated up. Charles Amin, who is a solid guy. Derek Nandi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know much about him. I I, I want to say he's solid. But, you know, they have all world guys here. Chris Jones. But he's currently holding out. Is You know, a lot of this is going to be uh, make or break. You know, it depends on how um, he's playing, if he's playing at all. If he holds out and, and holds true to that, man, they're going to suffer up the middle. He is the catalyst. He is the straw that stirs the drink there in Kansas City on defense in the middle of the line. Having 15 and a half sacks tied his career best last year. And, man, he's, he's just a game wrecker. Um, we were able to hold him in check. You know, all, both O-lines did well because of the, I mean, it's primary, not primarily, but um, contributing factor factor being that field. But, man, um, they, they present a challenge, man. And um, definitely George being a lighter guy um, and, a, you know, speed guy could give, you know, Jordan some troubles. But I believe this offseason he's probably done a lot of work on, you know, mitigate, uh, being able to stymie, mitigate uh, speed guys. So it'll be interesting to see what work he's put in and in, in coming out of the lab. Willie Gate, man, a, a run, you know, uh, a good a good run stuffer. Nick Bolton, a, a running hit linebacker, fast guy. They have a solid set of linebackers, man. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they, you know, they challenge our backs and uh, tight ends. So Jerry Sneed, um, I mean, he's, he's a competitive, fight, a fiery, feisty guy. Trent McDuffie and Jalen Watson, uh, they have solid corners, and they got, you know, season, seasoning last year. Jalen Watson was a rookie as, and as well as Trent McDuffie. But they're coming back a year um, with a year under the belt and being Super Bowl champions. So they have the, you know, the, that confidence that inflation may not be, you know, that it's bad inflation, bad economy. It just might be that, um, I mean, yeah, like you have, you know, the, the, the scripts to go, go for it um, to, uh, to give it to the pharmacist. So, I mean, like you, uh, you won, you have the bragging rights. And um, man, Jess Reed's a very, very good safety, um, very solid. And Brian, Brian Cook, I don't know, um, but I'll say he's decent maybe. But um, their secondary, you know, can match up well with us. But um, I believe that still, you know, um, I mean, they got cooked last year in, in the playoffs. Uh, I mean, in the Super Bowl. So um, I look for our guys who, in theory, got better to still give them fits out there. Um, but anyways, let's get into the evaluation. So us going against Patrick Mahomes is going to be a chess game, man. We already know he knows everything that, you know, uh, he's seen everything in, in, in the book. Um, but it'll be how, you know, how we discipline, how we um, use disguise, how we um, play um, into adjustments. His mind meld with Travis Kelsey, you know, he had too much freedom in the Super Bowl and they didn't put, you know, they didn't double him any and just play straight up, which is just foolish by Jonathan Gannon. It just shows you that he's a piss poor coordinator. Could play with the talent that we had, but when it comes to making adjustments, when they made adjustments, nil. So um, the receivers, I, like I said, I believe they could be locked down um, by James Bradbury and um, Darius Slade. That being said, it's about like secondary, third, fourth, uh, fifth option with Travis 
I meant Travis uh, with um, Patrick Mahomes because he's going to scramble. That's what, and that's when you know he gets teams in trouble, puts them in a bind, and uh, he, he's able to buy time or even maybe uh, rush for a couple first downs and um, really kind of like a poor man's, a very poor man's Jalen Hurts uh, able to put you know teams in a bind. So um, and Isaac just plays off of that. You know they don't need him to be a star. He can just come in and, and uh, you know um, he, he runs very hard. He runs angry. So um, he's able to give you that burst up the middle and, and, and test the metal of, of the, your you know guys in the middle in the keys. And we have new guys, so we'll see how they do. And you know not just um, guys that are new to the roster, but guys that are in, in a new starting position or uh, going to be getting more playing time and we counted on. Um, more so so um like i said the line you know they, they're very solid but it'll be interesting how we attack and who do you think is the weak link um like donovan smith and and Jawan taylor i would target the edges you know like more so and try to break those guys down um send over low blitzes you know send um d, d tackle and uh, d and uh or edge guys uh stunts and twists games and play those games and uh you know Jonathan Gannon, Gannon, he was ready to use it, but when we did, he did use it. It worked because you know he apparently used it. But that being said, um, what is the, sh the size uh, key going to be to crack this uh, the code to uh, getting to them? So we can't let you know him sit back comfortably like he did in the Super Bowl, or otherwise he's going to sit in there and dice us up. It wasn't for a huge, huge amount of yards. He threw for only a buck eighty, but three touchdowns, um, unchallenged on the field, and they just he, they, he, they were able to con control the pacing in the second. Uh, Half and it just shows. All right, um, their D line, I believe we can come out and, and, and do them nasty. So, uh, pause. Um, similar, similar to the Super Bowl without the field advantage, we don't need to be spotted in advantage. We can handle the guys, you know, um, straight up. And Chris Jones is, you know, the, is uh, the, the main problem. So, uh, you know, double teams and if you have to, uh, slide siding protections, uh, screens, uh draws and, and whatever we can do to catch them off guard or to misdirect them those fast one fast one linebackers send them in misdirection you know have them going you know two different ways reverses just sweep so um there's things you can do to slow a, um, a fast reading fast reacting defense down and um the corners man like, just, they're gonna have the hands full like i said the isolation and if we throw you know third receiver at them you know like i believe Chris Watkins or oz we can spread them out four wide as well um, maybe not be as deep as them at wide receiver, but I don't even know that they're untested. So to see if how Rasheed Rice, how his uh, comfortability, Sky Moore, um, Justin Watkins, I think, um, Watson Watkins, um, how he, um, how he he's you know coming along. Can he be depending on because he was hurt last most of last year, which is why they couldn't play him um, consistently. So. Um, and then that tight end, all world, he, he, there's not a guy on their defense that can cover him one-on-one. -on -one. Either too small, too slow, um, or yeah, they, they, one of those two. So it's going to be interesting, but it, it's going to be such a matchup. This is, this is one I, I could have us, I see this game going either way. Be honest with you. Um, I have us losing this one on the schedule just because of like where it is. And like, um, is it, it's in the middle of a, a gamut of games that, you know, we're going to, um, be, Kind of a gauntlet where we have like six games where it's going to be tough against playoff opponents and our teams that you know um, have you know like a, are set to make the uh, make set to make the playoffs or had a, you know really good record last year. Um, you know, I mean, like yeah, like the Jets they didn't have a good record, but you know Aaron Rodgers is a difference maker for them. So we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, man, it, it's it's. Uh, yeah, it, it's gonna be interesting to see like how how uh, I mean yeah John, Richie, Richie James I didn't even mention him they have him so they're gonna have to slice some down some of these guys maybe get rid of some guys but um, I like uh, yeah yeah so Donovan Smith is not downgrade uh, more about the running game but I didn't even mention Ricky Felix Anu DK Um but yeah it, it, it's it's gonna get dicey man. Um, According to, like, um, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm like lost in thought. But, um, darn it. Yeah. They have so much, so much, uh, depth at, at you know, different positions. Like, receiver. I say, I mean, edge. Obviously, edge rusher. They, you know, they have, you know, um, a good amount of depth. 
But how do your players respond? You know, he's a second year player, second year, he's a new guy. Um, he's gonna maybe be coming off a holdout. And yeah, I know he's you know you can get into form, get dominant. But if he's holding out eight weeks, I'm like, I don't know, because they might need him. And and what is are they gonna be missing if they miss him? So, um, anyways, like I said, I, I I have it going either way, man. Um, but I think you know we have you know the way with all to win it, but it'll be depend on how we play against him, how how we attack Patrick Mahomes, and um, how we're able to try and get to him this time around. And us being, out, I don't think they're gonna be able to hold us to contain us on defense. So um, I think it'll be maybe it might be a shootout. And um, how do we go into that this time around? So all right, anyways, ranking all eight divisions, we're gonna see. They have the Eagles, the uh, NFC East at number four, um, and we have three teams that make the playoffs. And I get that you know Giants are gonna have a tougher road this time around, as well as the Cowboy, Cowboys. But you know them being solid. Um, and Redskins, you know, I mean, Cowboys commanders keep saying the Redskins, but they don't count for much. Uh, but the, the Cowboys, I mean, I rank on them a lot and, and, and don't respect them, you know, on certain things. But they do have a top roster. Just They're just paper thin with depth, but um, it's one of the best. The AFC West, come on now. Denver hasn't shown anything. The Chargers could be, I mean, I think, I don't think they're a playoff team this year, man. I think they get, you know, they get cast out. And then you have the Raiders. And then I think that division is weak. It doesn't deserve to be at number three. And then the AFC East, you can make a strong case for them. I, I'd say they, be, they belong here. And the AFC North, that, that, that just this is the most flung to me to me to say you can say that any one of these teams. No, I would say put them at I'll put them at four and switch with the Eagles at three. So um, this doesn't make sense to me. Like Kenny Pickett may you know be um, say to take a jump, but how quickly you know do you expect that with the Steelers, um, the Browns? Yeah, but they still have to go out and prove it. You know, we're playing with potential right now, and you know. Um, I think they're just above average team this year, um, to be honest with you. Uh, defense, yeah, they're good, but can the offense get right? Um, and the Ravens and the Bengals. The Bengals keep them, you know, keep them up there. And the Ravens, uh, I don't know, man. I, I think they're, they're they're pretty solid, but you know, it all depends on a lot. So um, that's why I don't have them up there. But I would say the NFC East deserve a tick more respect. I put them at number three. Um, nine, top nine NFL offenses in 2023. Uh, had no problems with the Chargers being there, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, so yeah, they deserve to be on the list with that potential. New York Jets. I mean, it, it all depends. Cincinnati is low here for me. They shouldn't be at six, man. Um, Jacksonville shouldn't be above them. Um, I get that Kevin Ridley's back, but you know, that's come in and prove it. And yeah, ATN offers a lot. Wait, how much is Tank gonna see the field? He's gonna maybe steal some carries. Four. This is so low for us, bro. Um, I Buffalo imploded in the playoffs, so that for me. We should be at number two. Um, cause this is a crock. What the f- are the 49ers doing at the top of the list? They don't have a quarterback right now. Like, yes, it's Brock. But what, like, we don't know what he is. He's coming off of surgery. Like, he's going to have some lag. And then he's second-year player. You know, what people watch film. They broke him down. Like, you better believe they're going to have a, a beat on him. You know, when they didn't have one last year. So, I mean... To me, like it, it was indicative of like how he looked in um, the preseason game. I saw this one drive, those little t- twists like that, all the things he did last year. Wait, people know them by heart now. So, put him in. Well, I don't. They're not even. I mean, they could borderline be not not be top five. That's because of the quarterback situation. Kansas City, I put them at number one just because you know they proved that they were you know best last year. I put us at number two. Like think about the number of ways that we can attack. Yes, we're top heavy, but. We have other options. We just choose not to use them because our top three are so good. Like I said, they haven't. He hasn't proven it. Um, he's been stuck in, in. In I mean, like the two tight end set. I get that. You know, get Gabe Davis, but Gabe Davis didn't eat last year. So, I mean, like that's that's very controversial for me um, here, and then some of the other ones I just mentioned. But, anyways, all right. Last thing we're gonna do here is look at the backup quarterback uh, position rankings. So. Dalton, I put Jacob Brissett there. Um, I know Dalton has experience, but you're boosting him off off of last year. What he did, nah. Sam Darnold, maybe he deserves. I mean, I'd say he's top five. Taylor Heineke, um, over him. I don't know. He, he's he was a starter. He was a surprise guy. So I would maybe switch those. And Teddy, well, Teddy deserves to be higher than that, man. 
Um, I don't agree with that. Ty Tyrod Taylor is, is quietly silent. I mean, silently um, consistent. So I would say, yeah, but Tyler Huntley definitely doesn't deserve to be here. He deserves to be higher than that. Mitch, I don't know about that. And Tanner, you put Tanner McKee here, that, that's a crock, man. That's a crock. We haven't seen him done, do jack sh in real life games. Gardner issue, the way he played this preseason, you couldn't, I mean, maybe, maybe see you couldn't argue, argue with that. He's a solid guy. Better than he showed last year, I believe, definitely believe, because it was the wrong offense. Um, square peg in a round hole. James Winston, um, yeah, he, he, he's, he's pretty good. Just, it's sad that he couldn't get, you know, put, get, put it together, get it together as a starter. Marcus Mariota, man, yeah, people are going to be surprised with this ranking, but look, he's better than, I don't even know this guy. Um, Cooper Rush, yeah. Bailey Zapp. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I can say I would be a throw up. Uh, or, 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 yeah, or, yeah. A throw up. A toss up, sorry. Davis Mills. Maybe. Mike, Mike White. I don't know about that one. I'll maybe put Mike White up um, above him because last year he balled out with the Jets in his uh, two starts uh, for a uh, injured um, Drew, not Drew, um, Zach Wilson. And Drew, Drew Lock, uh, just kind of gets if, iffy out there here. But, man, he's better than you think. Look at the Atlanta game um, versus uh, the 49ers, 49ers. That's the potential that he has. And I think that kind of, like, is if you, to be honest, is what made it their decision for them um, and was comparable to what how we project him in this offense. And think about it. You have top, option, op, you have top options around him in a wide receiver one and two, Devonta Smith and um, A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard and that stable of backs. And we definitely make it a run-heavy game plan, use his legs as well. Um, and then just he'd be a poor version of Hurts because he couldn't make you know the timely throws. But, you know, we could count on, on, on play action. Yeah. Make a simplistic game plan. Nothing too complicated. But just work on work with the weapons you have. RPO. And, yeah. You'd have a, a solid, you know, uh, game plan to go with. So, um, he's not as bad as the preseason um, looks. But he's not the best, you know, like, backup that we could have, you know, could have gotten. Um, I don't know if, how many of these people were available. But, you know... If we could have gotten Teddy, I think that would have been an upgrade. Um, or he would be an upgrade over him. Darnold, I'm not sure. J Jacoby Brissett, for damn sure. But anyways, man, um, just don't panic about the situation like, you know, some content creators might have you think. Anyways, we're going to get up out of here. But that's it. Um, but I know you're not even watching, though. But it's all good. I love making these videos, and especially today's, like, um, a couple of bingo talks. We need to get back to that in the season, maybe. But, um, man, I'm excited. Real-time action is almost here. Are you excited? I am. Anyways, we're going to get up out of here. But as always, it's Fly Eagles Fly and let's mother get go. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs. Or other social media.